Hello students, I hope you all are good. I welcome you again to the video class of St. Joseph's Academy. Today we will study English Mulberry of class 3rd, chapter number 4, The Parrot Who Would Not Talk, part 3. In the previous videos, we have discussed the chapter in detail and solved question answers. In today's video, we will solve the exercises given in our book. So students, let's start. Let us first Discuss the summary of the chapter. In this story, the narrator is a child and he tells how almost everyone had a parrot or a parakeet in Missouri. Parakeet is a type of parrot that is very colorful and has a long tail. They were great talkers and would say things like study, child, study or don't be greedy, don't be greedy. These were the words that they picked from the surroundings. Then he states that their parrot was very different from other parrots as he refused to talk. Refused means was not willing to. So their parrot would not talk. He shows how Aunt Ruby bought it from the bird catcher and insisted on keeping him and then tried to teach him to talk. But he did not like her at all. She used to say kiss kiss while putting her face close to the cage but he refused and showed anger. One day he suddenly struck her spectacles of her nose and after that she began to dislike him. Stared, started making faces and calling out you are useless, can't talk, can't sing, can't dance. After that grandmother asks the narrator to take care of the parrot by feeding him. Now the parrot is happy. Now, so the parrot was happy as the narrator gave him green chilies, ripe tomatoes and slices of mango. Next. One afternoon when everyone was in the dining room and the narrator gave the parrot his lunch, he left the cage open by mistake and the bird went flying into the freedom of mango orchard. Immediately, grandfather came into the veranda and said, I see your aunt's parrot has escaped. Aunt Ruby was upset and the narrator feels that they would not see the parrot again. But to everybody's surprise, the parrot was found sitting on the veranda railing. The narrator gave him half of his mango. After a while, Aunt Ruby came and cried, Look, there is my parrot. He must have missed me. But with a loud noise or with a loud squawk, he flew out of her reach and perched on the rose bush. And in a tone similar to aunt, he screamed, You are useless. Can't talk. Can't sing. Can't dance. After listening to these words, she got angry and went inside her room. Now, the parrot became a regular visitor to the garden and veranda. And when it saw aunt Ruby, it shouted, you are useless, can't talk, can't sing, can't dance. And finally, it had learned how to talk.
Now students, this is word wall. This is the exercise that is given in your book on page number 57. So here is a list of birds. There are many birds here. Let us read the name first. Cuckoo, Woodpecker, Crane, Flamingo, Hornbill, Peacock, Pigeon, Bulbul, Owl and Eagle. Now students, we have some questions given in our book. So this Students, we have a crossword puzzle given here. So we will read the questions. Then we will write the name of the bird according to the options that we are given. So let's start. A bird that hoots. So this is the bird that makes a hooting sound. And the name of the bird is owl. Next. A brown song bird. So this is a brown colored bird and it sings song. The name is Bulbul. Next, a bird of prey that soars high in the sky. Bird of prey means a bird that kills and eats birds and animals. So this bird kills and eats animals and birds and it soars high in the sky which means that it flies high in the sky. So the name of this bird is eagle. Next, a tall long legged bird that is usually brown, white or gray. So this is a tall bird that has long legs and it is usually found in brown white or gray color. The name of the bird is crane. Next, the national bird of India. Students, this is the national bird of India and we all know the answer. Yes, very good. So this bird is peacock. Next, a bird that lays its eggs in the nest of other birds. So this bird lays its eggs in the nest of other birds. So this bird is cuckoo. Next, down. Students, now we have to write these answers downwards in the given boxes. So let's start with the first question. A bird with a large curved beak. So this bird has a large and curved beak. Its name is hornbill. Next, a bird that pecks all day long. So this is the bird that pecks for whole day. Pecks means to strike something with its beak. So this bird keeps on striking its beak on something. The bird is woodpecker and the woodpecker keeps striking its beak on wood. Next, a bird that carried letters from one place to another in old days. So this bird used to carry letters from one place to another. This bird is pigeon. Next, a pink water bird. So this is a water bird and it is pink in color. The answer would be flamingo. So students, you have to write these answers in your books in the crossword that is given to you. Next. Question number two. Make sentences of your own with the following word from the story. So students, here we have some words given to us which are taken from the story and we have to make one sentence 
using each word. So let's start. Number one, refused. Refused means to say no or we can say it means was not willing to. So we can write a sentence. He refused to play cricket. Question two. Visited. Visited means to go to a place. So we can write a sentence. I visited the zoo with my parents. Question number three. Suddenly. Suddenly means quickly or without any delay. So we can write a sentence. Our train stopped suddenly. Next, question four, in charge. In charge means to give a duty to a person. As in the story, the grandmother made the narrator in charge for feeding the parrot. So we can write a sentence. My parents made me in charge of taking care of the dog. Question 5. Loose. Loose means when something is not tight. So we can write the cap of the bottle was loose. So water fell on my books. So students we are done with this question. You have to do this question in your Mulberry copies. So students, it is grammar time now. We have a question. So let's read these sentences first. The children are playing in the park. So students, what are the children doing? They are playing. Yes. Number two, the parrot is eating a slice of mango. What is the parrot doing? The parrot is eating. Now the third sentence, I am reading a book. So this tells us that I am reading. So I am reading, is reading and are playing. These all words are verbs because they are telling us about the action that is going on. So are playing, is eating, and am reading are verbs in the given sentences. These verbs are in present continuous form. Present continuous means that the things or the action is going on in present and is continuing. That is happening. Next, present continuous tense. Students, it is used to show actions or activities happening now. It means in present. For example, we are studying English. So we are currently studying English. So this is an example of present continuous tense. It is also known as present progressive tense. Progressive means it is progressing or it is continuing. So students now here is a table that shows how to use the present continuous tense. So we will read how do we use present continuous tense in different nouns. So when the noun is I we always use M with it. So we can make any sentence like I am playing, I am studying, I am dancing or many other sentences. Remember, we always use am with the noun I. Next, you. We use are as the helping verb. So we can make any sentence like you are my best friend. You are 
playing. So am is used as a helping verb and we add a main verb with it in ing form. Next, singular nouns such as he, she, it always use is as the helping verb and a main verb with it. Next, plural nouns like we and they use are as the helping verb and the main verb in the ing form. So we can make the sentence by placing the words in the order noun plus helping verb plus main verb in its ing form to make it present continuous tense. So swimming, sleeping and playing as given in the table above tells us about the action taking place. So they are the main verbs and in present continuous tense we write the main verb in ing form. It shows the continuous that the work is being continuing. Is, am and are are used as helping verbs. They help the main verb to form present continuous tense. Now students, here is a short exercise related to present continuous tense. Let's start. Question number one. Fill in the blanks with the correct helping verb is or are. So is, am and are. These three are used as helping verb as we have read it just now. So in this question we have to use is or are to complete the question. So let's start with first question. The teacher dash telling us a story. Students, the teacher. This noun is singular because we are talking about one person. So this is singular. And we always use is as the helping verb with a singular noun. So the answer would be is. Moving on to the next question. Tom and Anne dash turning cartwheels. So there are two children, Tom and Anne. And because they are two, so it becomes a plural noun. And we use are with the plural noun. So we will write are in the given sentence. Tom and Anne are turning cartwheels. Next, the ants dash marching up the hills. The noun ants is plural. As it shows that there are many ants that are marching up the hill. So as the noun is plural, we will use are as the helping verb. Next, the stars are twinkling in the sky. Yes, so because the noun is plural, stars, so we will use are in the given question. Now here are the answers for this question. Let us read them. The teacher is telling us a story. Tom and Anne are turning cartwheels. The ants are marching up the hills. The stars are twinkling in the sky. So students now, question number two. The people in the pictures are describing some actions that are going on at the time of speaking. So here are some pictures given to us. We will all look into our books. So there are some pictures given to us. And we have to write what action is going on at that time. We will use a helping verb and a main verb in ing form. So we will use the verbs in the form is, am or are 
plus 1 plus ing. For example, if I say I am reading, so I is the noun, the subject, we always use M with the word I and read is the verb, that is the action that is going on and because it is present continuous tense, so we will add ing to it. So, now let's come to questions. So the first picture shows that there are children playing basketball. In the book, the word V is already written. So we can see that V means plural. So we will write R and we can make a sentence. V are playing basketball. Next. Now, there is one more picture in the book in which we can see the child is drinking water. The word I is already written in the book. So, we always use am with I. So, we will write I am. And because the child is drinking water, we will write I am drinking a glass of water. Next, we can see that in the picture, the birds are chirping and the children are looking at them, them and saying the birds is already written in our book and because it is plural so we will write R and we will write the action that is going on. So we will write the birds are chirping. Next question. We can see there is a boy who is painting the wall and in our book Anu is already written. So because the noun is singular we will start, we will continue it using the word is. So we will write Anu is painting the wall. So students you have to do this question in your books. Next. Now it is the spelling exercise and we will learn how to make plural words from the words that end with F. So when there is a word that ends with F and we need to make it a plural, we remove F from the word and add VES at the end. Let us look at the example given here. Half. H A L S. So we will remove F and in its place we will write V E S. So the word becomes H A L V E S. Half. Now there is a question given in our book. Write the plural form of the following words. So there are two columns singular and plural. Then there are some questions. We will solve them one by one. Question number one, wolf. We will remove F from it and add VES. So we will have a plural word, wolves. W-O-L-V-E-S. Next, shelf. We will remove F and add VES. So it will become shelves. Next, hoof. We will remove F and it will become hooves. Leaf will become leaves. Knife will become knives. Scarf will become scarves. So students, you have to do this exercise in your books. Moving on to the next part. Write well. So students, this is a composition exercise. Let us read the question now. Choose the word you would like to write about. So students, you have to choose a word. You can choose any word that you want to write about. Fill in the blanks given below. Now there are some fill in the blanks given to us. 
then write a short composition on bird then we have to write a short composition on bird so we are going to write about cuckoo this is already given in given in our books that we have to write the description of the bird what it looks like the call what it sounds like habitat where it lives and food what it eats so we will start point number 1 so we will describe a cuckoo so a cuckoo is a black bird so we will write a cuckoo is as black as a crow but it is shorter in size so a cuckoo is as black as a crow it it has the same color as a crow that is very black and it is shorter in size than the crow so it is shorter than a crow it has a long tail and short legs so cuckoo has a long tail and its legs are short next a cuckoo's call is the reason for its name so because the bird makes a cuckoo sound so it is known as the name cuckoo it sounds like somebody is making a cuckoo sound so we will write a cuckoo's call is the reason for its name it sounds like somebody is making a cuckoo sound next where it lives so it lives in bushes and trees and is found mainly in europe and asia next it eats fruits worms and insects but its favorite diet is caterpillars So students we are done with this exercise now you have to do this in your copies now students there is some homework for you number 1 read the chapter again so you have to read the chapter once again do all the exercises in your mulberry books do question number 2 make sentences of your own with the following words from the story given on page number in your mulberry copy and composition that you have to write a short composition on a bird given on page number 60 in your mulberry copy i hope you enjoyed this session see you in another video Till then keep studying and be safe thank you